Okay, good afternoon everyone. I think it is already time to start the meeting. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the second batch of the online training on urban agriculture for SIA Creative Camp. Okay, so for those of you who have watched the previous session, we already did the orientation session last week and we already uploaded the recording of the session into this link so for those of you who haven't seen it we highly encourage you to stop by at this website to watch the orientation session so today we will have our first session first and second session actually so we will have the first session on the introduction to the concepts on principles of urban agriculture which will be delivered by Dr. Idika Mansur from Siamayu Payatrop and after Dr. Idika will have the second session on solid organic waste management and composting by Mutin Lupa National High School so without further ado please Dr. Idika, you can start uh, to deliver the introduction to the concept and principle of urban agriculture. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mas Haris. Uh, good afternoon, mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, welcome to the second session of the urban agriculture uh, online training online course and uh, thank thank you for joining this program uh, i would like to introduce uh, urban agriculture the concept introduction to the concept and principles of urban agriculture uh, my name is Idika Mansur and i'm the senior biotrop director and that's my context next uh, senior biotrop this is just uh, an introduction that Sima Biotrop is the Southeast Asian Regional Center for Tropical Biology and it is one of the centers under the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization located in Bogor, West Java, Indonesia. It was established on the 6th of February 2018. So this year we are 50 years old actually. So this year is our golden anniversary. Uh, the task is to provide solution to critical problems related to tropical biology through research, training, and information dissemination. Problems related to food security and safety and environment are subjects for semi to, to contribute to give solution. And urban agriculture is one of the schools become our strategic partners to implement uh, the, and transfer knowledge and technology to students future generation and uh, community in general. As we know that uh, there are about 300 students uh, doing internship in uh, CMU Biotrop every year and about 4,000 students uh, visiting us here every year. Next, please. So the uh, definition of urban agriculture, there are many sources that we can read, we can learn what is the urban agriculture is. Uh, from the wikipedia.org uh, urban agriculture urban farming or urban gardening is the practice of cultivating processing and distributing food in or around a village town or city and according to fao food and agriculture organization uh, urban and peri urban agriculture or upa is the growing of plants and the rising of animals within and around cities and another one is from the mission of urbanfarming.org. This is, uh, I think, the website that is very active in promoting urban farming. Uh, establishment of gardens on unused land and space while increasing diversity, raising awareness for health and wellness, and inspiring and educating youth, adults, and seniors to create an economic sustainable system. And uh, this uh, urban agriculture or urban farming really has gained uh, increasing interest in the Southeast Asia and in the world. 
of food security and safety in the cities and reducing carbon dioxide emission from distribution of food from villages to cities. Next. Uh, concept of agriculture. Uh, the cities are usually far from the production field and limited land and space, light and also water. In the city we have to buy water. Uh, people are busy and not enough time to gar for gardening and also unemployment there. Biodiversity is low and high production of waste, especially organic materials. Next, let's see one by one that uh, far from the production field. Uh, because it is far, need distance, need transportation, so carbon emission from food distribution, transporting vegetables and other raw materials from the field to the city and from market to households. So carbon efficient is, emission is there. Freshness of the vegetables. So usually the vegetables uh, from the uh, people who go around uh, selling the vegetable in front of my house, sometimes stop in front of my house and the vegetables are not fresh anymore. Because it's been there for some time. And could not control farming practices. This is also another problem. Because we never know how actually farmer uh, grow their uh, vegetables, uh, like uh, overuse of pesticides, fertilizers to maximize production, and certainly this is unhealthy food. Uh, urban agriculture brought healthy and fresh fruits and vegetables right to the kitchen, less or even no emission. Next. For the limited land and space, light and water, this is really a challenging thing in the, in the city. Because of the housing in the cities are commonly very dense with limited land and space. So uh, the available space could be walls, fences, and also roofs. Light is often blocked by buildings and trees. Water is also limited and usually bought from a water company belong to the state or private. So you can imagine if we do farming, uh, would be not the same cost as it is in the village. And knowledge, technology, and creativity are needed to deal with the limitation. So planting fruit trees and vegetables in containers, hydroponic, aquaponic, horticulture, fertigation, mushroom production, that kind of uh, strategy that we can do. Because uh, mushroom production, for example, we can, we can do that under a heavy shaded space and using clean and safe wastewater. Next. So this is example of hydroponics uh, in our center in Simeo Biotrop. Next. And also this, this is the uh, hydroponics that has been, uh, I mean the teachers, the students, the school already learned from uh, Simeo Biotrop and they start establishing different kind of hydroponics and also ferticulture in their schools. Next, and this is catfish farming, catfish farming using a plastic pond. So even uh, in a very small space uh, that is not possible to dig a pond, then we can still product, produce catfish. And from the catfish, we can sell it for fresh, or even we can process them and pack them nicely so that we can sell in a higher price. Next. Uh, this is the mushroom production that I mentioned earlier. Uh, mushroom production, mushroom can grow under a heavy shade and even they need shade and also uh, high, high humidity and low temperature. So many students come to see me by to learn and uh, they should become an entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs when uh, going back to their places. And mushroom are not only produced fresh, but also in semi-vitro, we process them into different uh, products, like, for example, mushroom crisp with different uh, tastes, Next. flavors. Uh, people are busy and not enough time for gardening in the, in the city. So, uh, it, however, infrastructure, especially electricity in the city, are commonly good. So, it is possible to make... Uh, 
gardening uh, automate uh, using automate automatization using automatization so for example when we do hydroponic actually we can we can set up uh, we can control uh, equipment can be made to uh, water or to, to add some uh, uh, nutrients uh, using our mobile and that's what it been developed by a uh, university in Jember, East Java. And also for mushroom production, our school partner, uh, SMA Vikrama, high school Vikrama uh, vocational school, they have us to make, um, what do you call that, a sensor. A sensor that uh, when the, the humidity uh, lower or the temperature increase, then the sprinkler will start uh, spraying the area automatically. So this is the kind of thing that we can develop in the city, where people are very busy. And selecting the right system of growing and right vegetable plant species. It is very important also. Next. And uh, unemployment? Yes. The job in the city is different from the village. In the village, we don't maybe people with no not enough education that then go and uh, cultivate things, but uh, or maybe catch fish in the river. But in the city, it's not possible. A job in the city, usually formal one, uh, need certain degree of education and retire in certain age. So urban agriculture could uh, could be a solution. It can create jobs or to make income. Uh, and then selling products, selling the equipments, and also consultation work. And people are working not far from their house or apartment. So less stress caused by traffic jam. So by uh, practicing urban farming, actually people do not need to go away or far from their houses or apartment uh, so that there will be less stress because of the traffic jam. Next. Biodiversity in the city is low, so urban agriculture could increase biodiversity of the city through planting of various vegetable crops and also fruits, fruit, fruit crops. And uh, yes, in the city, high production of waste, organic materials, many, many trucks every day uh, transporting the, uh, the, the waste to the final uh, disposal area. So in the urban agriculture, organic waste uh, will be uh, processed into compost. So the organic waste has uh, become a problem because there is no space, uh, limited trucks and workers to dispose, and usually create smells when you pass by. Uh, in, the, in urban agriculture, we, uh, we will process the organic waste uh, to become compost and used for growing media for vegetables. So production of the vegetable even less, and the cost even less because we can produce uh, the media by ourselves. Next. This is the example uh, of organic waste uh, processing in Simeo by, by composting. Next. Now the principle in the uh, urban farming is reduce reuse, recycle, safe and healthy system by diversity and changing some shade tree species with fruit tree species. Next. Reduce means to reduce the quantity of waste that should be disposed by composting the organic waste. Next. Reuse, reuse pots, poly bags to grow vegetables. Choose relatively thick poly bags to be able to reuse them because if it is uh, the thin one, it is uh, it be easy to to break, uh, to tear off so we cannot reuse them again and become waste. And the use of plastic pipe to construct hydroponic system. Recycle. Uh, some species of vegetables are used only some part of them and the leftover could be replanted, need to buy seeds. So, uh, Recycle, for example, like uh, chili, eggplants, tomatoes, they also produce seeds. So we don't need to buy new seeds because we can always use uh, the seeds from that uh, from the one that we have already grown. 
and then organic waste for compost, new papers, newspapers, tissue papers could be recycled and processed into pots and that could be used to grow vegetables. And used bottles, bottle uh, hydroponic and viticulture. So you can you can go to the internet and then type bottle hydroponics. So you will find so many creations of how to make hydroponic using used bottles. Next. Safe and healthy system. Hydroponics could potentially invite mosquitoes to lay eggs in the system and become the breeding place for the mosquitoes. So cleanliness and regular observation is needed. Next. And biodiversity and changing some shade tree species with fruit tree species. So replacing some ornamental plants with various kinds of vegetable crops and replacing some shading trees with some fruit tree species. Uh, this is one of our this is our current program, the Simo Python current program. We will distribute the fruit tree uh, fruit trees uh, to the schools so that the, the students and teachers can learn how to grow fruit trees and how to enjoy the fruit by themselves. Next. Well, as a conclusion that urban agriculture could help city people to get fresh and healthy fruit food with low carbon emission. And urban agriculture could promote healthy life awareness and urban agriculture with creativity to utilize limited land or space, light and water. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation, Pak Ebika. So now we are... Okay, Mas Haris. Well, can I see if there is any question from the participants? You can oh. type in chat or oh, sorry. 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 unmute yourself. Okay, is there any question from the participants? Thank you, Pak Irdika. And basically, we can recycle what we have to start creating an urban agriculture project, right? Right, that's true. Yes. Thank you. So we can we can start urban agriculture without, uh, with low cost because we are using or recycling uh, materials that are available around us. Thanks, Masaris, and thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much, Perlika. So... Okay. Okay. So if there is no further question, we would like to move to the next session of Pak Irikanya udah pergi ya? Ada per barusan ada pertanyaan. Pak, ada Pak, masih ada masih bisa Pak Irika masih. Oke, Pak Irika, we still have one question. Oke. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the question from Charles from Mutin Lupa National High School. How does urban agriculture trickle down economically and socially? Okay, yes. Um, what we are uh, discussing here, it is not only uh, from the environmental or ecological uh, point of view, but certainly we have to uh, think about the, uh, the economic and also social impact of the urban agriculture. Because yeah, as I said that uh, in the city, the space are so limited. So by uh, having a groups of people, so this is from the social aspects, uh, a group of the community, so they can assign what produce what. So uh, they can exchange the products and then it become uh, economically viable. For example, if one, one uh, family has only a small space, 
and they produce a very limited amount of chili plant, uh, chilies, for example, or eggplants. So maybe it is not marketable. But uh, by having a community, uh, you can have more quantities, and so that can be uh, distributed up to the market. So it will have more economical value for them. That's, uh, I think, what I can think of. But uh, certainly, yes, we, we have to think about uh, economic uh, and also social sector. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pairlika. Uh, is there any more question from the participants? Okay. Oh. Okay, anybody else have a question? Bu Neni, gimana Bu Neni? Okay, and we have another question, Pak Irdika. Okay. How do you recycle hydrocarbon fuel separated from waste waters? <laughs> wow, that's that's a, a tricky question because uh, for hydrocarbon, when we have the technology, Simu Vitrov has the technology how to process the hydrocarbon hydrocarbon waste, but uh, for the moment, just leave it to the to the uh, to the city to take care of that because uh, uh, yeah I think uh, you need knowledge to process that so just concentrate on the organic organic waste only thanks Pa but uh, if you need uh, information on that further please just uh, email me then we can we can discuss on how to uh, how to process hydrocarbon uh, waste. We have a pure bio remediation uh, process to do that. Oh yeah, could you share your uh, email address again, Pak? Uh, my email address is i r d i k a m irdikam. Okay. Yeah, that is the. Uh, uh, that's my email address. And also you can you can uh, reach me using WhatsApp on that number. And more than happy to help. Okay. So for everyone else, you can note of Dr. Itika's uh, email and also WhatsApp number if you have any further question. Okay, so no more questions. Okay, I think there is no more question, Pa. And if the participants okay. have uh, further question, they can contact you through emails or yes, yes. WhatsApp. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, if you, are, if you are not from, you are from outside Indonesia, then just plus six two yeah, to the number. Okay. okay. Thank you, Masaris. Thank you, Pa. Bye. Bye.
Okay, so we will move on to the next session on solid organic waste management and composting by Mutin Lupa National High School. So I will change. Sino mo unan? Mutin Lupa National High School, right? Yes, we are here. Yes, already. we are ready. Okay, thank you. So I have changed you into the presenter, and you can start sharing your desktop. Hello, can you already hear us? Yes, we can hear you and see your presentation clearly. Please go ahead, time is yours. Uh, good afternoon, we are from Muntinlupa National High School and we are about to present to you Solid Organic Waste Management and Composting. <coughs> what is Solid Waste Management? Solid Waste Management is the process of collecting, treating and disposing of solid material that is discarded because it has served its purpose or is no longer useful. These are the classifications of solid waste. First is depending upon the characteristics. We have two, organic waste and inorganic waste. Second is according to the place of generation, domestic solid waste and industrial solid waste. It can also be classified as hazardous waste and hazardous waste. Now we will focus on organic waste. What is solid organic waste? Waste is any organic solid material such as wood, garden and lawn clippings. It can also include animal and plant-based materials and degradable carbon such as paper, carbon, and timber. Let's first have a short quiz. Let us check uh, each one's knowledge about organic materials or what we call solid organic wastes. First question. Environmental problems can be generated from incineration of municipal solid wastes. True or false? Then it's up to you what the answer is. What do you think is the answer? The answer is... True. true. Question? Solid waste is not a real problem around the world. It is only the hazardous waste that contribute to environmental detriments. What do you think your answer? Is it true or false? The answer is D, false. Although hazardous wastes contribute to environmental detriments, solid wastes are also problem, can be considered as problem in the world right now, as it produces uh, different gases that actually contribute to global, global warming. Third question, agricultural waste is the second most common form of solid waste. True or false? The answer is? True. True. Yes, we produce a lot of agricultural waste. Uh, even here in the Philippines, it's the number two. And that trivia is for all over the world. It not only uh, solid waste, but also it includes the uh, pollution that it causes in the agricultural land, such as the effect of fertilizers and other hazardous compounds. This one is, you can put eggshells in the compost bin. Is it true or false? What do you think the answer? The answer is... True. true. Eggshells are actually biodegradable. They can be broken down in smaller materials. And of course, they can be actually used as soil neutralizers and can even make the soil more healthy or much healthier. Because of the presence of the compound carbonates that helps in the gathering of nutrients in the soil. Next question. 
Which item can you not put in a compost bin? A. Cardboard B. Shredded paper and C. Cooking oil The answer is cooking, cooking oil. oil So why cooking oil? Why? Why do you think cooking oil? <laughs> Aside from the fact that it's a liquid material, and uh, the, yes, it's we're actually talking about solid organic waste. We are talking here, about right? solid organic waste that can also be uh, pro, uh, that can also be used for other purposes. In this case, we are talking about com we would and like to focus on solid waste management and composting. And of course, carbon shredded paper can even be included in com compost. In the compost. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now let's proceed. And this is how composting helps climate change. Climate change or global warming is caused by greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. So these are the greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. And the uh, it actually traps the heat and keeping the earth warm, our atmosphere, like uh, how it is happening in a common greenhouse, and that's why it's called the greenhouse effect. But because of the presence of these gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, which are actually produced by the decaying of uh, such biodegradable materials, then it, it Persons. Now, one solution to these problems is composting, which actually helps in slowing down the climate change that we are experiencing, specifically global warming. When food waste and paper biodegrade the landfill, methane is released. Methane is a greenhouse gas 23 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. Over a 20-year period, methane can be 72 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So methane uh, are the, is one of the founders of the landfill. So commonly, this causes uh, becomes one of the major pollutants in the atmosphere. does composting release methane? It's because oxygen is part of the composting process. There is no oxygen in the landfill. And that is according to Ami Donovan. And these are examples of compost bins made from reused pallets. You can also other compost bin which we will available in our vicinity. And we can also give you some examples later. How does it work? So compost uses nature's recycling program. So we have plant, trees, and leaves decompose. They become soil compost. That that and that compost feed the compost feed the plant. Composting is a natural biological process where organic material will decompose with little or no help of man. However, you can greatly decrease the time it takes material to break down and also deactivate unwanted seeds in the material by building a compost pile. If you encourage uh, thermopiles, thermophile, heat or heat loving bacteria to dominate your compost pile, the time it takes to break down will be decreased and the heat generated will kill weed seeds and seed causing organism. Yes, that's right. Inside of composting bins or co compost uh, bins, we have the small, medium, and the large one. For the small, an indoor worm bin uses red wiggler worm to eat food waste from, that is vermicomposting. It accepts only fruit, veggie, some fruit, or grain waste. A container for a compost pile should be located on fairly level ground, preferably in the sun to facilitate heating the pile. It should be constructed of material that does not restrict airflow, such as mesh wire or lowered boards. 
second is the medium one, the back, the back composting. Earth machine, other store bought bins, reused pallet bins almost free, accepts wider range of food, yard waste, and no animal products. So that's it. You can even use uh, recycled materials in coming up with compost bins. You can use reused pallet bins or other plastic containers that are readily available. But for the structure, if you have lots of material to start with, you can try to build your pile in many layers. Alternate green layers of fresh vegetable matter with dry layers of weathered material, absorbent layers with wet layers, so you can make it alternate in structure, so that there is aerobic decomposition. And to, ins to ensure this aerobic decomposition, it is a good idea to drive vent stacks into the center of the pile. This can be bundles of corn stalks, perforated pipe, or tube of wire mesh. So you can just be creative in coming up with your compost bins. And for the large, large place, It's called Bear Path Farm. Uh, sorry. And this is what it looks like. We're in all food, including meat, poultry, bones, cheese, oils, and even paper are included here. This is where such wastes are delivered. It is also called the Martin's Farm, wherein you have there the clear view composting. Almost any organic material or any organic matter can be composted. Since, Since the decomposition of the material is a surface area, surface area phenomenon, phenomenon, the material should be reduced to as small as particles as possible. Running the material through a cheaper shredded is, a, is ideal. However, if one is not available, yard waste can be underground and run through a rotary loom several times. What are the yes and no of composting? Yes, you have green nitrogen rich, you have vegetables, fruits and peels, bread, rice, pasta, grains, you also have coffee grounds, paper coffee, filters, and tea bags. We also have eggshells, grass clippings, and yard waste. Yes, we have carbon rich such as fall leaves, straw, hay, shredded newspaper or paper, shinet paper plates, and cartons, wood chips, and all the potting soil. That's right. So those nitrogen, nitrogen rich and carbon rich materials are very ideal for composting. And what are the no-nos in composting? So the no will smell and attract animals. Example, meat, fish, bones, cheese and dairy products, fat, grease, oils, peanut butter, cooking oil, cooked foods, with lots of sauces or butter, also deceased or, or insects ridden plants, weeds which sprouted by, root. sprouted by roots, and weeds with seeds. Okay, uh, so there's red roots, and that's, that's why the question that we had a while ago, cooking oil, why do you think it is not accepted in a compost? It's included here, wherein it actually smells and it attracts animals. And actually, it can also be recycled in other as a source of fuel. And there are also some other uh, materials that can be come up out of such materials. So you can just be flexible in coming up with your compost bin. Some, they include these materials, some do not. It's up to you whether you think it is effective for you or not. Some actually think that citrus fruits should not be included in a compost. But there is another research that debunked that myth. So actually, maybe it's just a case-to-case -case basis depending on how you uh, 
had the how, how you did the process and where you are located and it has something to do not only with the container and the structure but also with the moisture because water content is very critical this here percent you actually run the risk of having an an anaerobic pile what do you mean by anaerobic degradation there is a degradation that happens without presence of oxygen. Yes, the, the bacteria that are uh, that are decomposing do not, require. do not actually require oxygen. So, if if the water content actually is much lower than forty percent organic matter, what will happen? Then it will not decompose rapidly enough. Yes, that might happen as well. The pile should always have the consistency of a wrung out sponge. And foul odors are a sign that there is too much water and anaerobic conditions exist. So composting doesn't necessarily mean that there should be foul odor. Actually, there should not be that foul odor in the compost because that just means that there is too much water and there is already an anaerobic risk that happened and ants can swarm the pile and it can be a symptom of too little water and what do you think on why cheese dairy and uh, such materials are not really needed in a compost or not allowed in a compost if you were to ask to be asked because there might be anaerobic degradation. Yes, that's yeah. it. Because fermentation can also happen. That yeah. might affect the growth of the plants. Yeah. And of course, it can be transformed into hydrogen, hydrogen fuel. fuel. Now, why do we need to compost? Compost is an inspect sieve soil admin. Amendment. amendment that supplies nutrients and organic matter and improves soil structure and water holding capacity. Let's focus on composting. So the, the process of composting is the decomposition of plant remains and other once living material into an end product known as compost. This uh, compost requires organic waste, microorganism, water, air, and carbon dioxide and heat. Have you heard of the word bokashi? Yes, because here in school we have our bokashi composting and we have actually done different projects in relation to bokashi. What is bokashi composting? Bokashi composting is an anaerobic process that relies on inoculated brand to ferment kitchen waste including meat and dairy into a safe soil builder and nutrient rich tea for your plants. In Bokashi composting, kitchen scraps of all kinds, including meat and dairy products, are mixed with some of the inoculated bran and pressed into the Bokashi bucket. And we have it here in our school. Maybe in some of the schools also in Southeast Asia, they have encountered uh, Bokashi composting as well. And you have lots of uh, benefits. We have different benefits obtained from Bokashi composting, such as biodegradation of wastewaters and many more. We have here the concept map wherein we can see the Go Green project. Uh, the Go Green project taken from the presentation of uh, Arief Sabdo Yuwono of the Institute per Tanyan Bukur. So in this illustration, the Go Green would, uh, uh, would have the following factors, solid waste, water, energy, and house. So in the solid waste that is separated into inorganic and organic waste, wherein the focus of our presentation today is on the organic and the composting process. So in the composting process, you, have, you will require the waste. So that can be produced into, into a valuable product that can benefit the economy, environment, health, and other factors. So collected 
the collected waste, solid waste, can be, should be separated into the two components, which is inorganic and organic, and classified into different purposes. So these unused materials now will be uh, will undergo different processes and will be formed into different products. So these types of product can now be uh, sold into the market or can be used in in the daily process of the of the people in the community. So generally, this composting and the solid waste management combined will surely help to increase the uh, the economic state of the people living in the community. Not just the economic, but also it will protect the environment and uh, on its long run will uh, provide help, uh, health uh, opportunities to the people in order for them to manage their waste properly. Common compost structures. First is compost pile, the simplest but not as neat and many be not allowed. Next is barrel or drum composter. Third is bin type structure. And lastly is the three chambered bin. So these are examples of the composting method based on the presentations of Yuwono Ariyav Sabdo of the Institute of Pertanian Bugur. So this is a rice straw composting. So it would undergo chopping and then uh, chop, chopping of the rice straw and then put it in the composter. And then afterwards, uh, they also undergo uh, sharing sessions wherein they conducted field discussion in order for the community people to know about the rice straw composting. Second is natural static pile composting. So natural static pile composting, as shown in the picture, uh, it involves the structure material, with, which is the red brick, and the rice field area measures that measures 3,172 meters square. They also have rice straw composting, which involves chopped straw and goat, uh, goat manure, and it contains an aeration holes to supply oxygen within the compost pile. Yes, piles turn into compost quicker when microbes are aerated. What do you mean by aerated? It, it, it means that it is given air to breathe by stirring dirt with shovels or pumping through air pipes using solar fans. That's another method for that. And after the compostable organic materials have been composted, the microbes die off or look for another job. They also have composting of household solid waste. So, household so, so the daily input or the different solid waste material com coming from the food preparation and other things that at home are collected. And these are piled into the compost pile. So two to three months later, they will have the product which is compost ready to use. This are the fun trivia about composting. Just some interesting facts you would like to know. Birds use compost to incubate their eggs. The Australian brush turkey builds piles of decomposing vegetation. The heat from these compost piles Sorry. The connection is lost. Oh. Sorry. The heat from the compost is used to incubate their eggs so that they won't have to sit on them. The compost pile maintains the eggs at about 30 degrees Celsius or 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's a nice one. You know about that? Oh. No. That it can no. actually incubate the eggs and that is from Australia because it can generate heat. And why do you think there is heat? Because there, there is, is a process of decomposition. Yes, and there is energy released, the decomposition that happens. That's why it can even incubate the eggs of birds. That's a trivia. Another trivia is... The second one is putting past to work. Black Blatty composting. What is blatty composting? Uh, blatty composting is using cockroaches 
to eat kitchen leftovers. Yes. Oh, instead wow. of worms. Yes, you need to try uh, cockroaches. Cockroaches are excellent composers. They are fussy and will eat almost anything. Plus, they are to kill and reproduce like crazy. Here in the Philippines, there is one study that used cockroach uh, in order to aid fertilizers. And they actually have proven are excellent composters. And what do you call that type of composting using cockroach? Blatty composting. composting. That's what we have learned also. Aside from the vermiculture, we have blatty composting. composting. Now let let us share to you the waste management program of the Dupa National High School. Of course, we do practice solid waste management. And before we to the organic waste management, we will share to you our solid waste management wherein we have our materials recovery facility wherein materials are placed or stored. We have for the plastic pet bottles or the metal wastes, the, the cartons. Here we also have our what we call the creative team based storage facility for bottles. Here it's called the theme, creative theme based because there are different themes that can be incorporated in this storage facility such as this one, the Darth Vader trash and the Minion trash. And the objectives are to motivate through creative visual stimulation to students, teachers and other stakeholders to take part in the solid waste management program in the school and also to beautify the surrounding while generating sustainable income as part of the trash to cash, to cash program, program of the program school. school. Now, you can also be creative in your composting. Now, instead of the storage facility for the pet bottles, you can also make a creative theme-based composting <clears throat> instead of this uh, storage facility for pet bottles. And Another, the bare one. So this is the appearance of our theme-based storage pet bottle facility. And that is without the design. That's actually a part of our trash to cash program. And here, we collect pet bottles as part of our solid waste management program, <laughs> wherein we have come up with an improvised flotation device using pet bottles and juice foil packs. Also made reinforced hollow blocks using pet bottles and shredded, shredded. foils. So these uh, pet blocks are used as uh, fillers in making hollow blocks. So these hollow blocks are uh, also being used as fins and other material used for construction purposes. And the riprap from pet bottles and foils. Here you can see the the rows and the columns of pet bottles, wherein the foils, the shredded foils, are inserted inside the pet bottles. Bottles in coming up with decorative plant containers, and that is for our school beautification. That is a vertical garden that, that utilizes the pet bottles as the main container of the plants. And the foil cache, which is a uh, storage of empty foil packs, uh, which is... Uh, we cooperate with the Villiar Foundation. Foundation. To be recycled into chairs or exchanged for organic fertilizers. A recovery, wherein we gather different electronic, used electronic devices or wastes that are turned over to the Earth Day Network for proper disposal. We also have an irrigation cabinet in every room and doorpost of the class. For the recovery of biodegradable wastes, we have our kitchen composting in the canteen. We also have vermiculture. And that's what we have in our school. Now, uh, we will do some other 
composting, we're in, we will do some more detailed facts. One is that fetal compost has been managed and three human disease risks are eradicated by the heat of the pile. Product that is use, useful for our agriculture purposes and enhances soil health. So that means if you are making a compost bin, you have to ensure that human disease risks are eradicated. And how is it eradicated? It can be eradicated by the heat of the pile. And another fact is that compost has the ability to hold nutrients by adding to the an ion and cation ex exchange capacity of the soil. Composting is a natural process that occurs gradually at the different rates in different locations in the presence of soil, water, and biodegradable materials. So you can just be creative in coming up with your composting. It actually depends on your it actually depends on the location, the presence of the nutrients, and the biodegradable materials that are readily available in your location. And lastly, compost is a controllable process using green waste material first and then adding feedstock and or other organic amendments. So that's what you have to remember when it comes to composting. When an organic pile was waste pile gets aerated and oxygen is introduced into the pile, the ambient moisture thrives, breaking down the matter efficiently. Compostable organics can also be saturated and water and break down anaerobically. So the activity from microbes in a compost pile produces heat or steam through chemical reaction the endothermic process. So compost that is kept at a minimum of 100, 131 degrees height or 50, 53 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 21 days kill human, kills human pathogens found in the feedstock and bean waste. That's it. That's the presentation of Montinlupa National High School. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Great presentation, everyone. Uh, okay, so that's an interesting presentation and also great uh, example of the composting implementation in their school. So did anyone have a question for Mutinlupa National High School? Okay, uh, one question for me. Have you ever had any experience with uh, uh, black soldier fly? Black soldier fly. What? Fly. Black. Uh, fly. Yeah. Uh, that's that seems interesting. We haven't tried that here because here in our school we use fungi, bugs, and worms, mm. and of course we have the bokashi balls. Mm. But what? What is it again? What? Soldier fly. Soldier fly. A okay. Black soldier fly. It have a very short lifespan. Uh, the black soldier. Fly. Yeah. That is one of the interesting uh, organism that can be found in our location today. One of the research that we are conducting about the black soldier fly uh, uh, is larvae that was produced by the fly. So, but in the fly itself, we don't have researches on that. But the larvae, we have our ongoing project in the senior high school program. Yeah, because I think it have a very good uh, possibilities to use it as a composting agent, <laughs> something like that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any question from the participants? Mr. Harris, you ask question. Okay, can you uh, explain it again? The blati. Is this a question from Zaki Chandra? The blati composting. Yeah. Now, instead of using the the worms we have here, we <coughs> cockroach. Do you know the American cockroach? 
the brown one the pink one do you have oh, that yeah, in yeah. madagascar yes. ah. do you have that kind of cockroach in indonesia oh, so they doesn't fly right <laughs> they, they fly, they fly? Oh. oh yes when they are triggered they fly but uh, most of the time they do not fly but when you trigger them they will <laughs> So that is being used in the composting process. And they eat kitchen leftovers. Mm -hmm. So the, they are actually excellent composters. And there's a study that have been conducted. There's a study that has been conducted here in uh, our school, wherein they use cockroach. And another interesting uh, trivia about cockroach. Actually, there are so many benefits that we uh, we can obtain from okay, the cockroach okay. itself. Its exoskeleton, the outer portion, uh, can actually uh, be used to treat wastewater because uh, we can derive uh, chitosan from the chitin that it has in its exoskeleton. And the chitosan can actually absorb and absorb uh, different um, organic compounds and can have these antibacterial effects. And not just the exoskeleton of the cockroach, but even the brain of the cockroach has antibacterial effects. Those are just some of the studies that we have here in our school about cockroach. So yeah, th that's why we are really uh, conducting several studies that can show the benefits of cockroach. <laughs> wow, that's new. Antibacterial from cockroach, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why cockroaches do not uh, die even when they are in very dirty places, in garbage or dump sites, they're present. They do not die because they have anti-bacterial property in themselves. They also have flexible exoskeleton. Mm. And very flexible exoskeleton, yes. But how do you control them for not uh, getting outside and go anywhere? They can be good. I think there are countries that have been culturing cockroach already, but we, of course, we do not culture cockroach yeah. because they're there are plenty. <laughs> they're, they <laughs> easily multiply yeah. and they are actually hard to kill. But do you know that there's another study here in our country wherein we have found out that the cockroach exoskeleton, when powdered, can actually kill itself. No other uh, pesticide can do that, but the powder that we have come up with the cockroach itself can actually kill itself and or another cockroach can kill another cockroach and it's very potent more potent than any insecticide available in the market yes and we are currently working on that that's one of the researches we have Wow, okay, thank you. So many interesting about cockroach. Uh, one more question for me because uh, this is a comparison of what Professor Arif have uh, delivered in the first part sessions. He said that it is on a natural static pile composting that you just can put anything in there, starting from the food life leftovers and then uh, what is it, leftover chicken and etc. But in your presentation, you mentioned that it is in the Red category, right? Uh, yes. Here, this one. So we can be flexible in our composting, but uh, these are discouraged. But doesn't mean that uh, you will not be successful in your composting. It actually depends on your location and how you will go about with your composting. But there are some reasons why we included it here in our red category, such as they easily smell and they attract animals and pests. And they can ferment, actually, they can easily ferment and turn into uh, alcohol. Mm. But it, since composting is a natural biological process, any material can actually um, use as a, can be decomposed with little or no help from anyone. So, yeah, they can be uh, turned into compost even uh, without these processes. But, of course, 
we have the structured process for composting that will really ensure the uh, utmost benefits that we can gain, which ca can be beneficial for the plants. Because they are good sources of nitrogen as well. There is a question here. Aside from the example reduce of beside from the example reduce of pet bottle, what more things for beauty decorations in your school? Uh, for the for the pet bottles, uh, we have done lots of materials such as uh, the uh, baskets and Christmas decorations, <laughs> flowers that are also used as decorations in the school during special programs and other occasions. And if you have seen the salva water that we have, the impro improvised flotation device, there's also a boat that was already made. The uh, balsa, do you know the boat? Inflatable, inflatable. Yeah, boat. Boat. inflatable boat out of the pet bottles and that's part of our solid waste management program. Not just pet bottles but also cans. The aluminum cans are mm -hmm. also used. These pet bottles also are being turned into dress and clothes and that uh, those are being presented during the science month activity of the school. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. We cannot hear you. Stop sharing. Huh? Stop. Stop sharing the desktop. No more sound. There is. We cannot hear anything. Hello. Yeah. We can hear you all right. Okay. Yes. So, is there. Yeah. Is there. Any other questions? There is a question, but it's uh, regarding the overall. Overall. Uh, objective of the course uh, so she asked what is the final product of this course okay so I think that's for Xiume Biotrop so basically what we hope to accomplish at the end of this training is that the participants can come up with a project proposal something like that on either one if you have implemented the urban agriculture it is a project proposal on how to do you can improve your uh, existing urban agriculture technologies but if you haven't implemented any of the urban agriculture technologies no, we hope that you can develop a project proposal for developing a new urban agriculture technologies in your school so basically that's what the end product of this uh, workshop Okay, I hope the, that answered the questions and if you are not clear on that, you can go back to our orientation session. You can watch the pre recorded session on the Creative Cam website, creativecam.cmu.org. Okay, so any other questions? Okay, perhaps a question for me. You have tried the Fermi compost uh, procedures, right? Which, uh, yes. which, what is it? Which species, <laughs> which kind of worms did you use and why do you choose uh, that worms? We have the red wrigglers and we also have white worms. Mm. And Fermi compost, uh, here in our school, we have the a mixture of vegetable and food wastes and we also use bedding materials and vermicast also
Yes, we think earthworms are uh, the best uh, worms that can be used to turn such organic waste into very high quality compost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. We are still waiting for another question from the participants. I think there is no further questions, so you can close your presentation. Another information that we can give you before we close, uh, you can also try using the termite because we have uh, one other study here that we are conducting in our school wherein we use the nasute term, termite because it is rich in enzymes and protozoans even the because it has very rich uh, microbiological flora inside its gut that's why it can also be used to bioremediate wastes we have tried using it to bioremediate the oil and we simulated an oil spill and we have also tried to use it as a bio-augmentation agent in soil. So that's it. You can be very creative in whatever species that you want to use in your compost. So you can use cockroach or worms, and you can also try termites, bugs. And so those are the uh, organisms that you can use to have a successful composting. So happy composting, everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mutin Lupa High School. Nice presentation. And okay, I think that's it for today's session. So we will meet again in our next session on Wednesday, 30 May about the aquacultures or aquaponics production techniques and practices from Mutinlupa National High School and SMKN Satu Malang. Okay, so thank you for joining us today and see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.